Hey everybody, welcome. Hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification icon if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well for even more nice links. This is a project I really wanted to do for a long time and I know a lot of you wanted to do this. I said I was going to do it in C Sharp, but now it's going to be C++, Lua and SFML and we're going to make a 2D game engine within this tutorial. So it's going to be both an engine tutorial and a game on top of that. So it's going to be kind of two in one here. I have a few slides I want to show you guys. The first one is called contents and this isn't all the points that we're going to work on. This is just a few of them, but these are some of the most important ones I thought. Of course, we're going to be making a game engine, like I said, and a game on top of that. Uh, map editor so we can have some kind of playing area here animations are very important we're going to be making fluid nice animations with a nice sprite sheet like same the same as sprite sheet or a few assets that i've bought you'll have access to all the assets from the description box github link and there you can just check out download all the stuff but of course you can't use them commercially i have bought them so i can but for you it's just there to practice and, and have fun with it we're going to do collision it's a very important part in a metroidvania of course you don't want to clip through stuff you don't want to access areas which you aren't supposed to so we're going to be making a nice modern collision system here the open world map is a big point because you usually have rooms in these type of games but we're going to make it totally open world everything is going to be in the same map and hopefully you understand what i mean here it's not going to be room based in that sense so it's cool if you haven't worked with that before we are working on a sfml series the RPG series, which is going on about 200 episodes very soon. So that series you can check out if you want. That's more of a top-down RPG with all of the same stuff basically here, except the game engine with the Lua part. So check that out if you want as well. This is going to be different because this is 2D from the side. So it's a side scroller. Basically jumping and things are more important here. It's not an RPG in that sense. We're going to have enemies, very important bosses, something to kill, something to, to grind, something to give you points and all that stuff. We'll probably have some leveling in here as well by killing enemies. So it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, Power-ups, very important. Now note here, power-ups and upgrades are different. Power-ups are temporary and they can be pickups that you find from killing enemies. Upgrades are more permanent and they're going to stay, stay with you throughout the game. So you find a new suit, you'll find a new jumping ability, shooting ability, new gun, whatever. All these things you'll be able to upgrade and it'll be pretty cool. And then dot, more dot, 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 of course, more points to come. What is so special about this series, since I do already have a game series going? The special thing is you guys are special, so I want to give you more content, firstly. Secondly, guys, it's fun to work on this stuff. The thing is, we've never worked with Lua, really, in a scripting language in a game engine. We have never done that, and it's a very standardized way of working today in the industry. You usually don't code all your stuff in complicated code. You use scripting because it's a lot easier, and it, it just divides up your code into game engine code and game logic code, like my two other points here. So the logic code is going to be in Lua. This is all the fun code where all the gameplay stuff is and everything. Uh, then you have your engine code, which is just a boring backend code, which is, you know, the tough stuff. Like wh whatever you define there is how your game is going to run because that's your engine. And this is more flexible because you can quickly add stuff, new scripts, new classes very fast. You don't have to recompile stuff like that, which is a point I'm coming to soon. Uh, it's easier to update because you can just add a new file very quickly. And low compile times, of course, because you don't have to compile any of this code. Scripting doesn't work that way. It's, it's a real-time interpreter. So you can even change your code in real time and it will change in the game mostly. It depends on how you load it. You could technically reload the entire game very quickly and just everything will change. But yeah, there you go, guys. And it's easy to code the fun stuff just like I said before because that's all in Lua. Now, what will you learn? We already kind of went through this, but here are some more specifics. Uh, you'll learn how to make a game engine that uses scripting. And through that, since we're using Lua, you will learn Lua as well. And why to use states is very important. I use states in most of my game tutorials, but it's very good to do for menu-based systems. You'll have a main menu, start screen, you have a state, game state, editor state, lots of different states. It's a very nice way to divide up all your code because usually games run in states. How to make an open world game again, it might be something new to you so it's great if you worked with this before maybe you learn something new open world games are tough because you got to remove parts of the world which you don't want to update you can't update the whole world and render the whole world all the time each frame so it's a good way to know how to call these and remove stuff that you don't want and then how to work with smooth physics we're going to be making a physics engine a very simple one but very smooth and nice movements you know nothing jittery nothing like that it's going to be based on acceleration velocity and this is how i'm doing it right now in the sfml series if you want to go learn that right now there's a bunch of stuff there that you can learn uh but we're going to be redoing it and this is going to be more on jumping and stuff like that there's no jumping in the sfml series in the rpg series sorry yeah there you go we're going to be working with components uh, even more upgraded version of our component system you'll be able to add anything you want 
belong to any entity and it's gonna just change that entity to become a player or enemy or whatever we can we can do whatever whatever we want here so this is a very good way of working and then etc dot 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 lots of more stuff to come don't worry guys this is gonna be great you will need to know c plus plus sfml you'll need to know that lua you don't have to know if you know lua it's a bonus you can help me out when i mess up but lua is, is also you're going to be learning that basic here uh, and i'm learning it at the same time but i know enough lua to work with this and then we have the sfml part because i have a sfml series a tutorial series on specifically sfml i really recommend you to check that out as well as the c plus plus one uh, because i go through a lot of things and game design patterns and stuff in the sfml series check that out before you start this please because i get a lot of questions on sfml in this series i will go through some of the stuff uh, just to refresh your memory but it's not going to be a tutorial on sfml you know you'll see how to use it and but i'll always refer you to the sfml tutorial series here you go guys if you are on windows this will be great mac probably this will be great linux and eh, it's going to be a little tougher guys because i don't know really how to link lua and everything on S uh, on linux uh, but i recommend using visual studio for linux and also mac if you can because that's where I'm going to be working in. Otherwise, do whatever you want. If you know how to work it, go ahead. Thank you for checking this out. Hopefully you'll stick with me. Check out the description box. Like I said, nice links there. Drop a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification icon if you want to know when the next episode airs. And then also check out the top right. I always put in the playlist links and all kinds of links in there. So there you go, guys. Good luck. Take care. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one very soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.